going to be going through how you can create a complete graph. And what that means is just how do you make a graph in math that has everything that, um, all the information that you need to provide. So to do that, what we are um, looking for, some of the qualities uh, when you're making it, we're going to use an acronym actually. And we're going to use the acronym PLEASE. So it says PLEASE make a complete graph. So um, each of the letters of the word please is going to stand for something. So the first one, we want to make sure that we have points. So I have an example here of a complete graph off to the side. And you can see that I have these points labeled or not labeled. I have them um, plotted on my graph. So you can see those were the points that I plotted right there. So it includes points. The L is going to be for the labels. So the complete graph should have like the X here and the Y there. It should also have labels on along the axes. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more though in a little bit. So it's going to have labels uh, to show what the numbers are. The next thing is going to be the equation. So if I'm graphing an equation, I am going to include it right here. So in this case, it's y equals 2x plus 1. So I'm going to put it like next to the line if I have multiple lines on there or somewhere on the graph so I can see what the equation is that I'm graphing. And then arrows. So see at the end of my line right here and right here, I have two arrows. That's just showing that that line's going to keep going and that it's not stopping at the end there. So like that line would continue on and on and on if I had a bigger graph. Then I'm going to have S, so the scale. The scale goes with those numbers I was talking about on the X and Y axis. So you need to make sure that when you're making the scale, um, so like these numbers here, that you have an even interval. So I'm going by ones or I'm going by twos or whatever you choose to scale it by. You have to make sure that the X has a scale and then the Y has a scale as well. And the X scale and the Y scale do not have to be the same. Maybe you go by ones on the X and tens on the Ys because of, of the data that you have. But you do have to make sure that there's a, a equal interval between the numbers. And then the last one is to extend the line. What I mean by that is like you want to extend that line across the entire graph. Once in a while, what I'll see kids do is let's say I have a point here and a point here and they make two points and then they just like go like this and they have like this little line segment. So you want to extend it all the way all the way across the graph. Um, even if you don't have points there, you just take a little straight edge and you are going to extend it across the graph so you can see, um, see where the line is. And then maybe depending on what you're doing, it would help you make some predictions or see a point of intersection or something like that, which is one of the reasons why you're gonna extend the line. So I'm gonna do one as an example, just so you can see like how I can go through the process. So the equation I'm gonna use is y equals three x plus two. So the first thing, um, how we've done it so far when we plot, uh, when we have an, a rule or an equation and make a graph, is we just make a quick x, y table. So I'm going to use some positive, some negative, so I can get my points to plot. So I'm going to plug negative 2 into the equation. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, plus four, 2 is negative 4. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Add 2, I get negative 1 put zero in there, I get zero, add two, I get two. One times three is one, three, plus two is five, and then three times two is six, plus two is eight. So now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna plot those, plot those points. That would be the P, the, the points. Um, so I'm gonna go negative two, one, two, three, four, negative one, negative one, zero, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, and two, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's my points. The L is going to be my labels. So again, I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm gonna put the X there. I'm going to put, put the Y there. Um, and then I am going to, if I look back here, E, the first C is for the equation. 
So I'm going to write and say y equals 3x plus 2. And then a is going to be for the arrows. I haven't drawn my line yet. Um, I'm going to, I am not the best person at drawing a straight line. Like, that's just something that I've never been good at. That one was not horrible, but it is not, not a great straight line. But I did extend it across the graph, which is going to be the last E, and I put my arrows on it. So I got that going for me. And then um, something that, to tell you the truth, I probably should, should have done this first before I plotted the points, and I did not, um, because I would have wanted to know, like, am I going by ones or twos? I just went by ones, um, and I should have done this first. So, sorry, that's something you probably should do first. And I could go and I could label every line like this. Sometimes, though, if let's say, um, let's say that I kind of ran out of room, like over here, the negatives get kind of scrunched together, you do not have to label every line. So, let's say I wanted to. Um, label it by ones going up on the y as well. But this time I'm just going to label 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I'm still going by ones because I'm labeling every other line, but I am not, um, but I'm not labeling every line because then it's not so scrunched together. Um, you can see like my y axis. I like how that looks better than my x because there's so many numbers there. So just to make sure, let's see. I put my points. I have my labels, I wrote my equation, I put arrows to show the line keeps going, I have a scale on my x and y axis, and I extended the line. So this right here is an example of a complete graph. So when you, when you set up a graph, you should be setting it up like this and including all of these things. Remember, please make a complete graph.